What's up, y'all? It's me, it's your boy Asmongold, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to complete all the achievements required for Glory of the Tomb Raider. Now, unlike a lot of the other Glory of the Fill in the Blank Raider achievements, this one does not reward a mount and instead gives you two different things. Number one is that you get a title called the Tomb Raider, so it would be like Asmongold the Tomb Raider, and then also you get a battle pet, which is a miniature version of one of the Legion spaceships like the Sentinax called the Micronax. Now, I would recommend doing all of these achievements in normal mode, and the first one that we're going to be looking at here is called Fell Turkey from Goroth. Now, the way this works is that Goroth needs to destroy 30 of these pillars that he's creating here, 30 infernal spikes, with his shattering star. So what you want to do is you want to have your ranged and basically everybody stand and healers stand in either a pile or a line from Goroth. That way all of the pillars, because they spawn on each player, will spawn in a line and then the person that gets Shattering Star will be able to easily run behind all of those, kind of like bowling, and hit all of them at the same time. So as you see that Shattering Star is going to try and hit two of those which is why it's very important. Uh, the positioning on it is extremely important because as you can see, even though it was very, very close to that second pillar or that third pillar actually uh, did not hit it. So you have to make sure that all of the pillars are very close together and that's why it's important for all of your range to be stacked up so the pillar goes right through all three of them. Now, watching out for the different uh, explosions that he does, the infernal burning is not really a big deal because he'll spawn pillars intermittently throughout that. And you can also track this achievement, so make sure that you track it. It's going to start off red, and after you destroy enough of the pillars, it will turn white, and that way you'll know whenever it's time to kill the boss. It does take quite a while, and at a certain point, a lot of people thought it was bugged out for how long it was taking, but uh, eventually it did turn white, and we were able to kill it pretty easily. The only thing that you really need to make sure that you do is make sure that people position themselves to where Goroth is going to destroy the most amount of pillars possible, which does require a little bit of different tank positioning as well. Overall, very, very easy achievement to do, minus a couple of different things. As long as you have range that know what to do, it really shouldn't be too much trouble. Melee do pretty much the exact same thing. Now the second achievement is from Demonic Inquisition and it's called Grin and Bear It. Now the way that it works is that the mechanic in Demonic Inquisition that we're looking at here is Torment. Now Torment is a bar that's on my screen and once your Torment reaches 100%, you have a 90% chance, 90% uh, less chance to hit and you also take a lot of extra damage um, your healing is reduced and basically you're just nerfed in pretty much every single regard It's like you're going in this at like level 100 basically So what you want to do or what you have to do for the achievement is you have to push the boss and kill the boss with everybody at full torment So what you want to do is you want to get the boss to as low of a percentage as possible And we said like 50 million and then wait for Belak to reach 100 energy Everybody stacks up and Melee's Belak to where whenever he's casting Fell Squall and you hit him, you gain a very, very large amount of torment very fast, as you can see there. At that point, you want to save all of your raid cooldowns and all of your DPS cooldowns, as well as heroism, and make sure that every single player does have full torment. It's trackable on the Blizzard default UI, so you can see everybody, so it's not like really a guessing game. And then burn down the boss as fast as you can. Make sure to move out of Echoing Anguish. Make sure tanks are rotating cooldowns. Make sure you're rotating every single raid cooldown possible. Even though you're going to be doing this on normal mode, make sure you do not go down too, by the way. That way you clear your torment. Make sure nobody goes down. That was a mistake on my part. And that's honestly pretty much all you have to do. Uh, you just pop all your cooldowns at the very, very last second, get everybody max torment, and burn down the boss. Next achievement is called Grand Finale. You use the Murgle Horn during Harjan, and then this guy spawns, and uh, then he dies. So you kill him, he doesn't do anything, it's really easy. Uh, that That's it, that's the whole achievement, it's, it's a joke. So anyway, uh, the next one that we're going to be looking at here is actually a little bit more of a cock in the ass. And it's called Five Course Seafood Buffet. Now the way it works is that in phase two there's a special add, I think it's called Snorkel, Snorkel, whatever the hell his name is, and he has to eat five different things in the fight. Now the first thing he has to eat is one of the Abyss Stalkers, the second thing that he has to eat is one of the Murlocs, the third thing he has to eat is a player, the fourth thing that he has to eat is a player that gets Hydra shot on them that needs to stack inside the little circle that he's standing in or that he's in, and then the fifth thing that he needs to soak or uh, eat is the thing that actually makes him go away, which is the ink blot that you just grab and you put on yourself and you bring it over to him. So that's something that's going to happen already. And what you want to do is you want to have a third tank. Now, a third tank is going to pull the Murlocs away, as well as the Abyss Stalkers away, and get them low health. We were not able to confirm if actually making them low health 
makes it to where they're going to guaranteed uh, be eaten by him, but it did seem like it was pretty inconsistent. So I would recommend getting them to low health and then waiting for uh, the mob to spawn, the uh, the devouring maw to spawn, and then bringing them on top of it, and then using different uh, knockbacks and everything to knock them into the edge or the corner, and uh, usually it will work after a few tries. So anyway, uh, we're waiting for the uh, the thing to spawn right here, and the wave runners, you only get a few chances at this, so you don't want to push her into the last phase until you actually have completed all five of the criteria for the achievement. So don't waste any time. If you get to the last phase and you don't have uh, all of these up, uh, just go ahead and wipe it because Devouring Maw uh, no longer spawns. So as you can see, Devouring Maw is spawning, and you don't want to take them inside that uh, that uh, that like white or like uh, bright blue uh, circle, the inner circle, because that's what's actually going to eat you and it will kill you. Only one player needs to do that. As you can see, Ink Sauce was brought into it because that's why he went away. And also player seasoning was, which is where uh, somebody actually suicides in there, which is very, very simple to do. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and wait for the next one. And as you can see, I have one of the Abyss Stalkers extremely low, as well as two of the Murlocs low as well. And if you don't get the Murlocs here, they no longer spawn in the uh, in the second phase. So you need to keep the Murlocs up from that phase. And um, that means that you need to spawn them uh, by standing in like the jellyfish in phase one. So anyway, as you can see, they just got knocked in and he just ate the eel very fast. The Razor Maw thing uh, is not eating. He's not eating it. And then finally he is and they got it and he ate it and it was no problem. And again, also, Another one that's very complicated is the Hydra Essence. Make sure that whenever you do get the Hydra Shot, that you just run in there and soak it naturally. It, it's really not hard at all. You just need to make sure that you're inside that circle whenever Hydra Shot is on that player. So anyway, guys, that's all it takes for that achievement. Relatively simple, but it is kind of annoying to try and figure everything out. Now, this one here is called Wax On, Wax Off. Now, there's a specific NPC that is like a trash mob that's over whenever you're coming into the room to sisters, it's over to the left. Do not kill the Twilight Soul and instead bring it into the boss room after you've cleared all the trash. And what you're going to do is you're going to have, again, a third tank tanking the Twilight Soul, off tanking it uh, on the sides and rotating it from one side of the room to the other. Now, there's a lot of uh, conjecture as to what actually does trigger this achievement and uh, what needs to happen is the Twilight Soul is going to turn blue. What it appears to be is that the Twilight Soul will not turn blue until the last phase of the fight. And whenever the last phase of the fight occurs, then the Twilight Soul will turn blue on the next, uh, I guess, like moon change uh, in the fight. That's the way it looks like for me, and I don't really see any other triggers that really activate it. So we're going to go to the last phase here, and we have Priestess, and I'm just off taking a Twilight Soul. Everybody else does everything normally, except for they don't kill a Twilight Soul. And we're waiting here, and as you're going to see, the Twilight Soul is going to change colors. Now, there are a lot of, like, really, really effervescent things happening in this fight, and, like, uh, you know, graphics, so make sure that you actually are, are looking, but it is fairly obvious. It's going to be the same color as that, uh, that like, uh, Huntress there that's right under her. And as you'll see... And just a second, there it is, it's blue. So whenever it turns blue, that's whenever it becomes a waxing Twilight Soul. There's no uh, name change or anything like that. It's just as soon as it turns blue, go ahead and everybody switches off and kills it. That's why we have it at half health because in case it was gonna switch to another color or something like that, it should be very easy to just switch off and kill it very quickly, which is why it's also great to have a third tank because it makes it so much easier. And honestly, that's really all it takes. Uh, I don't really know entirely if there's another way to trigger it, but it does seem like all of the ones that I've seen have been in the last phase. So just keep it alive until then and rotate it back and forth. Next one is Great Soul, Great Purpose, the big mystery of uh, this whole thing. What's going to happen is there's going to be a little swirly that spawns right under Desolate Soul. And you're going to have somebody who's very fast, like a warrior with a heroic leap, run over and stand in that soul and then take it back to the middle of the room. The soul will bounce from the corporeal realm or the living realm to the spirit realm. And then so you're going to need to have four people soaking it back and forth. You can't soak it uh, one time or sorry, like two times in a row. You have to alternate between two people. So the rotation that we have here is we have the person in the corporeal realm that picks it up and then they take it to the middle and then the person in the spirit realm uh, picks it up after the person in the corporeal realm because it bounces off them and there's a swirly on the ground that they need to absorb. And then the second person, sorry, yes, the second person in the corporeal realm gets it from the first person in the spirit realm. So it goes corporeal, spirit, corporeal, spirit with each person intermittently. So you have four people total. 
So uh, it, it's very simple once you understand what needs to be done. And my recommendation here, and just have everybody focus on killing the boss, and the four people here just focus on doing the swirly in the correct way. So as you can see there, it just went over to Drillia, and he's soaking it. And each time a player gets it, what I told them to do is go to the middle, and that way it would be a lot easier for people to uh, basically keep it in one position. That little uh, green thing is a knockback, so you need to make sure that you don't get hit by that whenever you're soaking. So as you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and soak it myself. So again, you do need four pe people, uh, the Corporeal Realm Soaker 1, Spirit Realm Soaker 1, Corporeal Realm Soaker 2, Spirit Realm Soaker 2, back down the Corporeal Realm Soaker 1 in that order, repeating of course. So you just do that for the entire fight. At the end, uh, wherever, whenever you're actually fighting the Desolate Host, make sure that you do reposition to where you're outside of the, uh, of the swirlies that he creates so it doesn't one-shot your, uh, your soaker. And also, uh, just make sure that you have a designated like reset point. So the fight and the uh, the des the little um, what's it called uh, the diminishing soul doesn't just uh, accidentally get dropped, or the person doesn't get killed, or it doesn't get to the edge, and it's a huge clusterfuck. Just to keep it uh, in one specific uh, place. But other than that, just dedicate four people to it. It's not really that hard. Next one here is called Skywalker. This one is not really that hard, but it's very annoying. So what needs to happen is you need to soak a total of nine, yes, nine, uh, of nine different of uh, these little like kind of stars. They're the exact same, uh, I guess, like graphic as Algalon. So the first one is going to spawn in the absolute middle of the, uh, the circle that's in the middle of Maiden's room. So what you need to have for that is either a shaman or a um, demon hunter that's going to jump down there and then use either uh, the uh, fell rush or gust of wind to knock themselves towards that. The reason you need somebody like that is because a slow fall thing that happens in normal mode makes it extremely hard for anybody else besides that to get it. So as you can see, uh, we had somebody right there grab it and then Tom suicided, which is okay because he grabbed the first one. Now, as soon as he grabs the first one, you're gonna have all four of those other ones spawn down there in the bottom. And you have to soak all four of those stars that are rotating. So you have to time your soaks. As you can see, we just picked up one, and we also just picked up another one. So you can use a lot of different things to kind of jump down and soak them and then teleport back up. You can, of course, use the explosion that you get. You can also use Shimmer if you're an Arcane Mage, I believe. And you can also use something like Demonic Portal or Life Grip or anything like that. It is kind of hard to do, and sometimes, as you can see, you don't always make it, but the whole idea is relatively simple. You just have to make sure that you're timing it, and this is honestly the hardest part. The uh, next four are not really that difficult to do, so you need to soak all four of those, which will kind of take a little bit of time, so be patient with it, and have everybody else who's not soaking or not assigned to soaking just doing the fight normally, because the odds are you'll lose a few people throughout doing this achievement, which is why it's going to be important to, after you get all nine of the different orbs, you're not going to have to worry about, you know, like popping hero and breaking the shield and doing the whole rest of the fight, because hopefully at that point the boss will be at like 10% or something. Thing. So after you collect all four of them on the bottom, then you have to collect all four of them on the top, which is actually extremely easy. What you need to do is you need to get the um, uh, the explosion debuff right there. I forgot what it's called, mass instability, the uh, little debuff from that. And then position yourself to where your back is against it because it knocks you back. So it will knock you in a direction that your back is facing up into the air and actually making sure that you hit, you don't want to you don't want to die. By the way. But hypothetically, uh, you're gonna get knocked up and then soak the little stars. And that was it, we soaked all of them, it was very, very fast. It's really soaking the ones on the bottom that are the real problem. So after you soak all nine of the stars, the original first one, the four on the bottom, then the four on the top, you can go ahead and kill the boss and you're gonna have no trouble whatsoever. As you can see, we lost a lot of people and it was a very, very sloppy run at the end. So make sure that if you are suiciding people or anything like that, you uh, don't suicide, suicide as few people as possible. And uh, if you lose too many people on the first four, or I guess the first five, you might have to wipe it and reset. And it can be extremely annoying to do, but if you have the right classes and people understand what needs to be done, it should be relatively easy to do. Now, that one is kind of annoying, and the next one is actually very easy, but in order to execute it perfectly like you did, you guys will see, it does take a little bit of finesse. Now, Fallen Avatar, the achievement is called Bingo. Now, the, the way the achievement works is the room uh, in Fallen Avatar uh, underneath him, like the, uh, the fire area in Phase 2, 
uh, is a square, right? And so you have columns and you have rows. Uh, is that right? It could be the other way around. But basically, you can't break anything more than a corner. You want to keep an entire row of the little squares on the top, an entire row and the entire squares on the bottom, or anywhere around the outside edge. Basically, you have to have a completely pristine edge of the top and also a complete your pristine edge of the bottom in order to get the achievement. You can do it one at a time though. So it's not like you have to do both at the same time. You can do one of like all rows and then one of columns on the, on the next one. So there are two things that trigger Fallen Avatar into going into phase two. Number one is Maiden dying and him reaching full energy. And number two is if he reaches under 20%. Now, if he goes under 20%, he will automatically uh, absorb Maiden, taking the rest of her health, and immediately go into phase two. So what we opted to do was not use heroism in the beginning because we were able to meet the DPS check and get him to 20% without that. And then as soon as we actually pushed into phase two, we would position Avatar into one of the corners of the room, pop heroism, pop potions, pop everything, and burn him down as fast as possible. Even if we got one ruptured reality, it wouldn't be a big deal. So another thing you guys might need to know is that in normal mode, he doesn't really gain any stacks of, I believe it's called Seer, that increases his damage, the, uh, the pulse thing, if you have him in the lava. So what you want to do is, if you can't meet the DPS check in the same way that we can, and you're getting multiple ruptured realities, after the first one, bring Fallen Avatar back to the original corner that he was tanked at, and that way he will just basically do ruptured reality and, and break nothing. The lava damage should be easy enough for you to heal your tanks through, and you just have melee and casters wait for him to come back. So you would just tank him over there, and then ruptured realities would come out, and then you'd bring him back over before it was cast, and then just back and forth until he's dead. And again, you can do this in, t in multiple tries and just doing one row and one column, uh, as you can see. I mean, it's a square. I mean, if you were done Excel or anything like that, it's very simple uh, what you need to do. But as you can see, if you don't get any ruptured realities, you're going to get it for sure. So anyway, that one was relatively easy, but the next one is... Whew, next one's very, very hard. So the way that it works is that in the transition phase for Kill Jaden, which happens at 40%, he's going to summon a number of different shadow ads. Those shadow ads make a cast, and you cannot allow any of those uh, ads to get a cast off at all. So what's it called? Uh, finishing a cast of uh, debilitated or something like that. So what you want to do is you want to bring as many blood death knights as possible. Now the reason, or death knights in general also, the reason that you want to have as many death knights as possible is because death knights have Gorfin's grasp, which is going to make it extremely easy to just grip in, and it's not even going to be a problem whatsoever. So you're going to grip in, and um, you're going to grip all, sorry, my, my thing froze. Um, you're going to grip the, uh, the ads in, into a corner, or not corner, a pile, and so you're going to grip them in from like all different directions, have your DKs like kind of in the middle of the circle, and then Gorfins them all directly together, have people spread out looking for Illidan as fast as they can, and then as soon as they get to Illidan, they need to get their buff and immediately stun all of those ads as fast as possible while they're marking on their map where Illidan is so other people can come up and follow up with other stuns, other knockbacks. A very, very good knockback for this is Supernova from uh, Arcane Mages. And basically anything, you can also use another Gorfin's Grasp. So as you can see, we have a number of different Blood Death Knights. And making the transition into this phase is also extremely important. Make sure you do not have a Singularity go out at all whenever this is uh, about to transition. So I called for a stop DPS so we can actually burn down these ads. And then we're going to actually push the boss. So they are grippable uh, at the very, very first seconds of this. But after he actually finishes his cast of Deceiver's Veil and the black, uh, the black like shadow thing goes out, you can no longer grip them. So you need to do it immediately as soon as they spawn, plan it out with people, and it will take a lot of practice. So again, we immediately got the grips out and people are marking on the mini map where Illidan is. They're running over there, getting their buffs, running back over and stunning them immediately. If you let one casket off, it's over. So you can also track this achievement, which makes it a lot easier as well. And at that point, you basically just kill the boss. This is one of those achievements that you need to have absolute precise play from everybody. You have to have all the death grips coming in from the right spots. You need to have the Gorfians gripping all of them together. If you don't get all of them together, your chances of succeeding on this are very, very low. So again, this is probably the hardest achievement out of all of them. 
And if the more death knights you have, the easier it's going to be. Make sure that you have people specced into CC and everything like that as well. We also opted to use Heroism in Phase 2 just to speed up our pulls in between the different uh, attempts that we had so we could get to that 40% phase faster, which is probably what I would recommend for you guys to do as well. Damage in that phase isn't really very important as long as you have CCs going and people know what they need to do. The ads die very fast if they're clumped up and people have the buff. So at that point, after you get that done, if none of them get the cast off, you just kill, kill Jaden, and then it's fucking over. So anyway, guys, that's how it's done. Glory of the Tomb Raider. Now, some of these achievements, people might have a little bit alternate strategies for, but I think the way that we've done them uh, is very, very, uh, very efficient. I would recommend doing almost all of these with as many players as possible, so you can offset having a third tank, offset having people dedicate themselves entirely to soaking on like Maiden and uh, Desolate Soul, and just having more people generally makes these achievements easier. So anyway guys, that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, I, I always really do enjoy doing these achievements guides, uh, achievement guides. They're very fun for me. So I, I like sharing that with you guys. So I hope this video was as uh, fun for you guys to watch as it, as it was for me to make. So if you have any other tips, suggestions, uh, or hints on any of these achievements, please go ahead and let me know and everybody else that might wanna know. Let them know in the comments and that's pretty much all I have. So. Thank you very much for watching and like, comment, and subscribe.